Welcome, everybody, to the Suit Up Podcast. I'm your host, Stephen Atkins, and I have the esteemed pleasure again to have my lovely wife, Lisa Atkins, with us. It's good to be here again. How you doing, sweetheart? I'm great. How are you? I'm doing great, too. So we're excited today uh, to bring to you another episode of the Mr. and Mrs., which I'm really you know, thankful that she's with me again today. This is so much fun. I know. I know. Once we're in it now, we're like, we're all in. <laughs> yes. We're all in. Let's go. So before we get started, I always like to say to our audience to remember to please hit the subscribe and like button for the Suit Up podcast. Uh, your viewership is extremely important to us. Uh, appreciate any comments or recommendations that you may have for us, suggestions for future podcasts. Uh, so far, so good. We're doing a great job with this podcast. We've had a lot of positive feedback, uh, especially on the last episode that we did, honey. That was so much fun. Wasn't it? it? Yeah. We it's did kind of introducing of feedback. Yes. Yes. So yeah, remember to hit that like and subscribe so that we can continue to produce great content for you, our audience. So babe, what are we talking about today? We are going to be talking about a really, I don't know, controversial Ooh, topic. Okay. Maybe okay. It, we're going to talk about failure. Oh, and mm. what to do with it, how to bounce back from it, what do you do when you fail? So we're just going to go right in for it. So coming back from failure. Mm -hmm. how, how do you do that? Mm. Yeah, that's a great question. And I guess the question before we get into that is, how do you think, why do you think people get stuck when facing failure? Yeah, that's a great, great point. People get stuck, this is my opinion. People get stuck in failure for really two reasons. One, they're really comfortable where they're at. And if they go through and try something and they fail at it, they'll say to themselves, well, that wasn't for me. Mm. And they'll just let it fall by the wayside. Yeah. And they'll come back to their complacent lifestyle or come back to their comfort level where they don't feel like, okay, well, if that wasn't for me, then, you know, I tried. I'm going to just let it go, you know, and move on from there. Uh, I also feel like that failure comes from either lack of preparation. That is true. I know in my personal life, some of the things that I failed at was from lack of preparation. I just wanted to wing it. You tell me I'm great at, <laughs> <laughs> you tell me I'm great at winging it. The master it. of winging it. The master it. of winging it. But at times that will catch up on you. Yeah. Like there, there will be instances and. To go to the next level, there takes some preparation. Absolutely. For sure. Absolutely. How about for you? Oh, I think people get stuck in failure because they take it too personally. Mm. I know I did a long time ago before I had a growth mindset. Any failure that I experienced was catastrophic for me. <laughs> in my mind. And I didn't realize that that was actually failure was actually a great thing. It's teachable moments. It's gaining experience. It's actually what's qualifying me to go to the next level. I like how you said that qualifying you. So do you feel like that it is a badge of honor? It is. It is. Failure is unavoidable. Unavo you cannot avoid failure. A lot of people do try to avoid failure, though. They do. I did for a really long time. All right, so... Oh, examples coming? <laughs> Example. Here we go. So, preacher's kid here, and any kind of failure growing up, there were so many people watching, and even small failures, there was always somebody pointing the finger, wagging their tongue, and it didn't feel growing up that there was a safe place to actually fail. And so when other people are talking about, oh, you failed, oh, you messed up, sometimes that really gets into your psyche. And for me, for a long time, I just, it was devastating when it actually shouldn't have been. It should have been looked at as, oh, this is a learning experience. What am I going to do different next time? Do you feel like that when you go through these instances growing up and you failed, did it feed into your people pleasing? Absolutely. Did you put your dreams and ambitions on hold? In some ways, yes. But I think more publicly, yes, I would put my, my private hopes and dreams, and I would do that more secretively than, and then more publicly, I would try to 
people please and gain the attention or gain the respect of other people to get their check of approval. So not really what you wanted to do. You were doing based on what you thought everybody else right. wanted you to do. But don't do that. No, 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 no. <laughs> That's overcoming failure, right? No, 101, right? Yeah. What are some examples? Give us an example of, of you personally. Of yeah. me personally yeah. feeling, Absolutely. oh my goodness. One that came to mind as we were preparing for this episode was when I was about 17 years old and I went to a youth camp and I love singing. We shared that on the last episode. Yes. And from a very young age, loved singing. And so went to this youth camp and then I took the little course to be in the choir for this youth camp. And they had a song that we were learning and anybody could audition for the solo. I'm like, I am going to do this. <laughs> I'm going to make this solo. I'm going to give it my best. I practiced so hard and nailed it down perfectly, tried out for it. And mind you, I was kind of a little bit of an outsider coming to this particular youth camp. And I tried out for it, did not make it at all. I don't even really think I was seriously considered. And I wound up in the back of the choir, just kind of hiding among (laughs) all the other choir members. And so I didn't get that solo. And for me, that was a failure. I failed. I, I didn't know exactly why. I thought I did a good job, but, you know, whatever. Right. So this particular song I always loved was always in my heart. Yes. Always knew it. Yes. And so from 17 years old, let's fast forward about 15 years. And I was at my church that I'm at now. And a couple, several years ago, when I was just starting to get into the music ministry before I was leading it, I, uh, they were getting ready to sing this song. And the person that normally does the solo was not there. And uh, the, our pastor's wife, who was leading the choir at the time, she asked everybody that was a part of the choir, which I was a part of, I was doing no solos, nothing. I was just a plain old... Be honest. <laughs> You, I said I said earlier, right? We were laughing about this. I said like, because you were kind of a nobody within the choir. I mean, I, not that you were a nobody, but in other words, you weren't, you know, known for the no. solos, known for your singing voice. No, I was just blending in, Correct. you know, and and you were just your being normal a choir of, member, right? A support for right. the choir. So, and ironically, it was the same song I tried out for 15 years. So, prior. so what did she say? I remember you telling the story about how she went about it. So she's like, does anybody in the choir know this song that can do the solo for this? And I'm like... What, what, what was going through your mind at that moment? I'm like, I can't believe it. This is the song that I failed at Right. 15 years ago. I failed at it and I wasn't even considered. And so I raised my hand. I'm like, oh, I, I know this song. And so we did the song that Sunday. We practiced right before service. And it was my first solo at church. I was there. And it went over beautifully. Please, don't even act like all humble about it. (laughs) So you go out there, and here is this five foot three, (laughs) 120 pound woman, and she gets the microphone and just blows it out the water. Sounds like this soulful, you know. Aretha Franklin, like, just had (laughs) so much soul in her voice and just blows it out of the water. To the point, mind you, that our pastor didn't even get to preach that day. It was a very worshipful, touching moment experience that... that Touched a lot of people. Touched a lot of people at that moment. It touched me, too, because it it meant a lot to me because... (sighs) It was something I failed at Yes. 15 years prior. Right. And if you had told me 15 years ago that I had to fail then to be prepared 15 years from now to touch people's lives, I wouldn't have believed it. Right. But that's what happened. So our failures are really preparation I agree. for the future. Side note, we have to be very careful with that song because every time you would stink and sing that song in church, <laughs> he would never preach. And we, it would be the running joke because it if it be was joke. on the set service, 
And there was a time, this was even sometimes, I'm trying to remember if I was playing the drums at all during that time when, when you first started singing. Hmm. You did it a couple times. Yeah, but I'm trying to remember if I was or not. I can't remember. But nevertheless, seeing that on the set, every time you would stink and sing it, that's a wrap. <laughs> that's a wrap. And we'd not laugh. so much anymore. But <laughs> right, right. But at the time, it was definitely, it ran on at least three or four times circuit, where if you would sing that song, you know, Pastor didn't have to prepare a message that day. Yeah. He pretty much. The, the lyrics of the song, the, the song is titled, My God Can Do Anything. And not only can he do anything for me, but he can do anything for anybody else listening and anybody else seeking and anybody else that has goals and ambitions that God has put in their heart. So So God can do anything, anything. Even 15 years later. Even 15 years later. So let's talk about that a little bit. What if, to the normal person, if you told them you try something, but you'd have to wait 15 years to see it come to fruition. How many think you could actually do that? That's a tough pill to swallow. It takes a lot of patience and resilience and a vision. And you've got to, whatever God's put on your heart, you got to have that there and stay. And it's almost like Noah you know, building the ark, yeah, right. <laughs> you know, you got to 125 be re- years, wasn't right? It? You got to be resilient and know and believe and not waver from what you have in your gut and what you have in your heart and in your soul. And you didn't let that deter you um, from that failure. 15 years during that 15 years, you did multiple things to move you towards preparation. I you did. didn't let that deter you you didn't let that keep you down like give examples of some of the things that you did within that timeline i kept doing what i loved maybe not as publicly but i would do it on the sly uh but i still tried out for there was a singing contest at a the local richmond festival right it was a chili cook-off i believe yeah got in the top three of that and then i met you through another competition that was a music conference. Was a right. com- music conference. You had cut your demo. You were singing. Mm-hmm. Um, you weren't leading worship of anything. You were in praise teams per se at mm-hmm. the churches that you belonged to along the way. But I never stopped singing. So you kept perfecting your craft. Yeah. And kept getting stronger. Kept getting better. That's the thing with failure. When you get back up, it's all about getting your reps in. Mm. It's all about how many times can you give back up? How many times can you exercise what's good in your life so that it's strong? I agree. And I then agree. then becomes undeniable. Oh, well, then you have the personal testimony. That's one of the things that I love about our own individual journey is that we're able to impart to others our own personal experiences and say, hey, look. This is what I went through. This is what I failed at, but I didn't give up, and I still kept preparing myself. It didn't happen overnight. It wasn't two weeks. It wasn't three weeks. It wasn't a year. Sometimes it was 15 years. Right. But the irony of that, to me, the irony of it is also showing the love of the Lord and Him coming full circle using the exact same song. (laughs) That you tried it out for it blows fail. my mind. There's no coincidences. No. There's no coincidences. So switching the topic a of little course. bit, let's talk about some of the fail- failures that you've experienced. So I have a love-hate relationship with failure. Talk about it. Uh, I'll start with the love part first. I love failure because it fuels me. Because I know that if I failed at something, then I have a great opportunity to get better at it the next time. The hate part of it is I hate to lose. Yes, you do. (laughs) My goodness. (laughs) I saw a quote one time or read it somewhere or heard it, and it really stuck with me, was that if you think the price of winning is too high, wait till you get the bill of regret. Isn't that the truth? So That's more costly than the price. I was unbelievable when I read that, or I either heard it or read it. And I was like, man, can I get that like tattooed on our wall somewhere as the as the uh, 
like the football players have that quote above the wall that they reach up and they slap as they're walking mm-hmm. out the door. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, today I'm going after it. I'm, I'm winning today. And let me tell you, he does not like to lose at all. <laughs> I'll give an example. Here we go. We Amuse. went to go play darts. Yes. So I, I've been an avid dart player for, for many, many years. I just enjoyed the competition aspect of it. It's an individual game. It's something that you can hone in on your own individual skill and just get, you know, get better and better and better at it. And it was just a nice, relaxing thing that I enjoyed doing. But then I got onto the competitive side as well. So go ahead. Yeah. Lay it on me, baby. He was telling me, oh, I used to do darts and play darts, and why don't we go? And so we were supposed to go for fun. <laughs> it was supposed to be a fun date night, <laughs> so we go play darts. And so we're just having a, a great time, just throwing darts. Granted, you didn't have any experience. I did had right. none, right. and he had all the experience. But me, being a firstborn, being an entrepreneur, Lord. being like I have my Here own ambition. competition. I like my own creative side of things. I like to figure things out, too. So I was trying to throw the dart my own way, taking some pointers, but I just wanted to get a feel for, for myself, the way I threw, threw it and the, the feel of it. And I just needed to have a few times where I was getting it. And of course, you know, man of the hour, knight in shining armor, you know, husband, was like, babe, <laughs> let me come to the rescue. Let me show you how it's done. Let me give you some some advice on my many years of expertise and you know my professionalism. You know, I was really and trying I to. I took lay a on. few of them. I took a few of them, but then I got to the point where like I, I'm I'm done. Just let me do it. Just let me do it. Let me figure it out. And that's that's saying it nicely. <laughs> You shut me down. You shut me down. Straight up. You're like, I got this. It wasn't all, oh, just let me know. It was like, I got this. I got this. I said, what did I say? He's like, okay. Okay. And then he left me alone and went totally in competition mode. It became not fun real fast because he was throwing bull's eyes every single time. Didn't give me a chance. (laughs) <laughs> he wiped the floor with me. And uh, so I don't think we've played darts since. We have not played darts since. But Man. that's, he does not like to lose. Well, I think at that point in time, and I'm going to tell him myself a little bit, <laughs> I was trying to be helpful. And I totally understood your competition uh, and your drive. And, and it reached the point where you were like, I don't need any more advice. I've got this. <laughs> Been there, done that. And I was like, okay, let's see. And so I just, I went into the mode. I I went, you know how it is when you're playing a sport or you're doing anything, you don't hear the crowd, you're in the zone and you just perform. And so I just, I went all in and the game was over really quick. Really quick. So I was like, okay. There's a little sneak peek into our lives, but it's a great thing. We learned, we learned from, that was many, many years ago. Goodness. 10 plus? I would I would react plus? differently today, and so would you. Naturally, naturally. But fun experience. Well, that was a failure, kind of, sort of, right? I, we were not married that long when we did that. So this was also Before an kids. opportunity where we were kind of feeling each other out and getting to know one another and yeah. some of our idiosyncrasies and you know, things that we did before we were together, but we got to enjoy a little bit together now. Yeah. Yeah, that was fun. Yeah, that was a little bit of a failure. A little bit of a failure. <laughs> Oh, we don't stay in failure. No, That's no, no. the thing. We don't stay in failure. Not at all. How do you move through failure when you've experienced it? Like, what are some practical steps that you do? Like, something didn't go your way, and you're like, this bombed. Oh, yeah. I, I love to do research. So we'll use, there's been many times in my personal life and in my career of modeling and social media and things that I've had desires for. Where And I'll give a few examples. When I was doing a lot of reach outs to uh, even in New York Fashion Week. So I had the honor of walking in New York Fashion Week, really my first runway experience many years ago. And I was like, this is it. I've achieved, you know, one of the greatest things to be able to walk in New York Fashion Week. So guess what? Another New York Fashion Week comes around. I don't remember if it was the fall or the next spring. 
and I head up to New York and I start to audition for a couple of other roles within different designers, model calls. And for the first time, I started to get turned down. <laughs> I'm like, what? What is this? So I, that was a great failure to where I could have been, okay, I, obviously that was a, a fluke that I got to do it initially, and now I've got to give it up because obviously they don't like me or there's something. You, know, you, you get into that mind game of what's wrong with me. Mm, yeah. And it had nothing to do about what was wrong with me. It had to, everything to do about I wasn't the right fit for what they were looking for. Yes. Nothing to do with me personally. But people would look at that as a failure. And it could be detrimental to your personal psyche, to your, to your overall perception of yourself. Even your own talents and abilities can start to come into question. Absolutely. So at that point, when I say by research, I would find out more specifically about what the show was looking for. Did I fit the demographic or the look of what that show specifically was looking for? Excited to bring one of our sponsors to you today, Two Roads Had Company. Two Roads Had Company has been an amazing company to work with. It is one of the companies that Silver Fox Squad uses, and we call it the perfect brim. They have a great versatility of looks in straw and in felt. I absolutely love Two Roads. It's a small business, which we love to promote, and it's made here in America. So this is a great opportunity for you to go to tworoadshatscompany.com and pick up one of your new perfect brim. Hey guys, I'm really excited to come to you today. Just wanted to pop in real quick and let you know about today's sponsor for this episode, and it's with Anson Belt. I've had a great relationship with Anson Belt. They are a husband and wife team, made in America small business, which I love to uh, promote. Their versatility of their belts are fantastic. They were a men's belt company for quite some time, but now they've come out with a ladies line. Which I'm wearing today. Doesn't this belt look so classy? I love it, babe. It looks really good. I love that you can interchange the buckles and detach them from the bands and then switch them out with other bands, with other buckles. So you have a variety of looks with just a few buckles and a few bands. Well, how can we find them? AnsonBelt.com. And once they go there, is there something that you would recommend? I would definitely recommend getting the box set because you get to choose a few buckles of your choice and a few bands of your choice. And then when you get home, you can play with the different looks and have an infinite amount of possibilities to That's wear. That's really, really cool. Be sure to check out AnsonBelt.com. And so that was a whole new vein for me of researching fashion shows and how to reach out to designers and reach out to uh, some of the bigger fashion houses. So that was a lot of fun that you'd be getting networking and that get into that whole aspect of you, you know, your network is your net worth. And the more that you reach out to people and you make yourself known and you continue at it and realizing that you do one time, they're not gonna always respond. You, again, second time, they might not always respond. I have infinite DMs that I have sent out over the years of reaching out to people, asking them, hey, I think we should collaborate or hey, I'd love to come and meet and, and even I'll put it on my own bill and come out and meet you and fly out and spend time to develop the relationship. Nope, door shut. Nope, no response. What's wrong with me? No, it's not that there's anything wrong with me. Yeah. Either it doesn't work for their demographic or it didn't work for the time. There's even been one that I had that I reached out, reached out to two years ago, and then it finally came to fruition. But it was, I had to stay consistent with it. So I think researching, whatever it is that you're doing and you fail at it, why did you fail at it? Don't take it so personally. Yeah. Failure is nothing personal. It's just a building block to be able to learn a little bit more about the subject matter or whatever it is that you're involved with so that you can be better prepared for it the next time. <laughs> we, I said this in the car. I was like, if there was a good spot for me to put it. Like for me personally, I hate failing. But if I, if I, I'm not going to fail the same way twice. I may fail even better, bigger and better, bigger and better. the second time, but I'm not going to fail the same way I did the first time. Right. I still may fail, but I'm going to fail even bigger. Because it's not going. I'm going to learn from the first failure, and if I fail the second time, great, I can get my notepad out, take some more notes, do some more research. I'm going to reach out to people that I know, either in the industry. Um, that's where my inner circle comes into play, especially my wife and my best friend, that I can talk with her and say, "Babe, this is something that happened. 
uh, failed at it or it didn't work out. What are your thoughts on it? Excuse me. And what would you recommend? And then I have some of my business colleagues that I will reach out to. Some of my squad brothers I'll yeah. even reach out to. That's another little side note. Because of being in the squad, we all come from different walks of life, different backgrounds. They're all in their elevated you know, areas of life. Some of them are a lot older than I am, so they've gone you know, far on ahead in experiences that I can ask and get recommendations. And you know what? You don't have to take all the recommendations. You can take the meat off the bones. Talk about that, yes. A little bit here and a little bit there. Because I think sometimes, and we're, we're just going to go down this rabbit trail, I think sometimes you will take recommendations from people and do exactly what they did. Instead of taking the recommendations of your peers and some of your friends, family, even spouse, and cater it to who you are. And ask yourself, does this align with my vision? Does this align with my values? And take the pieces that do align with your values and make it your own. And that's going to come across so much more authentically. Let's talk. I'm glad you said that. Because talking about taking other people's advice and taking other, other even business advice and try to do it their way instead of doing it your way, mm -hmm. you can go through years of time, not wasted time, but time where you could have been spent more authentically. Yeah. Do you agree with that? I do. Do you have personal experience with that? I do. Just being in the industry that I am with sales and health and supplements and all those things, there are an infinite amount of ways that you can serve and help people. And people do it all kinds of ways. And people have different systems on how they help people and how they plug them in. And somebody can get really caught up in doing it the exact same way that somebody that you admire does. And you know why? Because they're doing it authentically to them. And they're successful at it. And they're successful at it. So it that whole right to them. All the bells and whistles and the excitement and the, 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 they're living off of their success. They're talking about their success. They, they want the success for everybody that they're involved with. And you can get caught up with that. Yeah. And if you keep getting addicted <laughs> to doing it somebody else's way, you're never going to know who you are. You're never going to find your authentic voice and, your, and find your authentic self in how you serve others. And you're, it's going to feel like a failure when you don't get the results that you want. And when you do get to this failure piece, I think another reason why people feel stuck in failure is because they don't know how to metabolize failure. Mm, here we go. All right. Let's so break it down, Lisa. Let's talk about this. In our physicalness, we all have a metabolism. Yes. Some have a higher metabolism, some have a slower metabolism. If you're not able to metabolize things, it starts to sit there and build up and become toxic. And you can get, you can get sick from that. Same thing with failure. If you don't know how to metabolize failure, it sits there and you replay it over and over in your head and you can get sick from it <laughs> and never move forward. There are two pieces to metabolism. All right, what are they? When, when we eat in the physical, it's called uh, catabolism. It starts breaking down the food. So with failure, you gotta look at it, break it down. What worked well? What didn't work well? What did I learn from this? Because not all of the failure is bad. There's some good in what you did. Sure. And so look for the good, set aside the bad. And then the other piece of physical metabolism is, uh, if I'm, I'm trying to remember the word, anabolism. That's what go. I'm looking for, anabolism. And that is taking those broken down pieces and using them, well, that creates energy, for building something new and building something better and healing and protecting tissues and cells and making new cells. And that's what we've got to do with failure. We've got to mm. metabolize it, break it down, use the building blocks to build something else that's new and better and stronger. What are some practical ways that people can do that? Well, again, 
first looking at what what did I do great? Sometimes it's just the act of courage of stepping out and doing something you've never done before. So I'm going to pause you right there. I like what you said. So in the midst of failure, you can still do something great. Yes. Yes. Think about that. But you've got to see it. You've got to see yeah, yeah, yeah. that that's a great thing. Yeah. So it's a great thing to fail. <laughs> it is an awesome thing. You can awesome even have thing. greatness in failure. Yes. Hmm. So having the courage to step out and do something you've never done before. I love what it. What else do you think about? <sighs> I think it's going to be your, your, who you surround yourself with. That's a great one. During your time of failure. I have seen firsthand people that will go through failure and they become an island unto themselves because they turn it internally and say, there's something wrong with me. Mm -hmm. And at the point where if you fail at something, that is the greatest point that you need to have a nucleus around you. I don't care what it is. Yeah. Uh, business, personal, relational, everything. Many times, even in our personal relationship where we'd have crisis modes, which would be considered failures, mm -hmm. we had to have people around us yeah. to help us through. Because either we didn't have the knowledge or we didn't have the experience or, or sometimes we were seeing so much of red that we couldn't see past the red to be able to make a logical you know, decision or have a great explanation of what's going on. So the, the, the nucleus of people around you, whether that's personal coaches or therapists or mm -hmm. best friends or, you know, spouse in instances. But if it's a situation where it's within the marriage, you need someone externally. Mm -hmm. uh, best friends, you know, colleagues, all of those. I feel like you have to have that in the midst of a failure. One for advice, one for support, and, and two to just be able to say, you know, it's not just me. It's not me. Yeah. It's not me. And you don't need 20, 30 people oh, no. for that. No. Sometimes it's it might be for a particular situation, just one trustworthy person that you can lean on and, and get advice from. A, a few more would be great. If it's 20, you might have 20 people telling you it's you. <laughs> <laughs> You're the problem. In the multitude of counsel. Oh, yes. There is safety. Yes. And there's wisdom there, too, especially if I, somebody had mentioned this to me a long time ago that in your relationship you want to have somebody that has walked that type of life that you want to live yeah. as a little bit ahead of you in life you want to have somebody like that somebody walking beside you doing the same thing in the same season of life and then somebody behind you that you're helping as well so you need those three types of people in your life do you think that once you fail big at something that it makes failure easier depends on your mindset yeah. Talk a little bit Again, about that then. Uh, like what you were talking about, if you look at failure as, oh, that's this is the end instead of these are building blocks, then if you isolate yourself, then it makes it harder to want to fail. If you take it too personally or you, start you to, listen to what everybody else is saying about your failure. You stop taking risks. Yeah. But... If you look at failure as building blocks and the experience and the qualification to move forward, then it's easy. And once you've done it, once you've failed enough, you realize that the stigma of it has no power. It doesn't. No. It has zero power over you. Failure only has power if you give it power. So you, you, you have a mind shift. Yeah. Paradigm shift. Yeah. Where you feel differently about it. You got to feel proud of failing. Yeah, I, I do at times. Not all the time. <laughs> right. Because my inner competition want to win all the time and crush it. But at times when I do fail, I, I, I feel like, okay, I am human. There's still areas. This is, this is a great piece of advice here. The older we get, we realize when we start to fail wow, I've still got things to learn. Absolutely. I haven't figured it all out. Yeah, and it's an opportunity to rely on God too. 100%. I know I'm not 20 years old. I know I'm not 40 years old. You know, I'm 47 now. Yes, I'm not failing at the things I did when I was 20 and 40, but I'm still failing at things now. And it's, it's humbling as well. That's another thing about failure. It's so humbling. 
in a great way. And if you can turn it into a, a positive, it's a humbling experience. You can still be grateful, but you're learning and you realize I haven't figured everything out. I still have room to grow. And it's exciting because if I still have room to grow, then that means that I can be even better. So when I'm turned 48, when I turn 49, when I turn 50, I can look back and say, I'm better than what I was when I was at 47. Yeah. Do you find that as you were talking, it made me think of having those experiences of failure Mm -hmm. and you were saying it makes me, you know, makes me realize I'm, I'm human. Yeah. But do you find yourself gaining more empathy for others because of your failures and because of your experience of failing? Couldn't agree more. You learn everybody is going through something. Nobody's exempt. Nobody is exempt. Everybody is going through some form of failure in their life because nobody is perfect. Nobody's got it all figured out. Right. And you realize sometimes that, again, this is my opinion, you're seeing the outward of internal issues. The way we either someone reacts or if they're going through a battle or a struggle. We've seen per- people in our own personal lives that have struggled with things over an extended period of time. They even, be, they even know the answers to how to get out of it, but they continue to fail in taking the steps that they need to do in order to get out of it. They just haven't strengthened that muscle up enough to be able to do it. But I have great empathy for them now because I understand the struggle. We all have gone through very similar things. Some won bigger stages than others. Mm, mm-hmm. But at the root of it, the root of the human element of it, we're still all going through similar Am I good enough? Am I good enough to do this type of job? Am I good enough to be a part of this group? Am I good enough to be, to have this type of spouse? Am I good enough to have this type of job? All of those types of things. We're all going through it in some form or fashion, but overcoming them and continuing to surround yourself with the right kind of people and realizing that everybody's going through it at the same time. It's, it's very much so that you learn to empathize with others. Yeah. I, I, you look at them, even I'll, I'll use this as an example, people that hate on you or people that say negative comments or they'll say things that are anti whatever it is that you're trying to do or criticize something that you're doing we get or, that all the time yeah. or the way that you post something yeah. or the way that you say something or they, they're pointing fingers they're pointing fingers. They're struggling. They're yeah. struggling. They're, yeah. they're having some there's some things going on in their lives that, you know, they're failing at that they that you need to have empathy for them. I heard it said, and I can't remember where I learned this from. I believe it was a book and I can't recall it at the moment, but it was so profound to me because it says that if you're stuck in a particular mindset or failure and somebody can't get out of it or you can't get out of it, it is because the payoff of believing that is greater than the payoff of not believing that. So for instance, I failed, I stunk at this. And so the payoff for you is I never have to take a risk again. I can just keep believing this. Mm. How many people do that? Just stay so right there. I, I know some. So but so think about what am I believe what is the payoff of what I'm believing? Because there there is one and maybe several payoff of what you're thinking and what you're believing. So regardless, but, th- regardless, there's a payoff, positive or exactly. negative, you're going to get a payoff. Exactly. Go ahead. But if you were to switch gears and say, you know what, I do have the experience and the knowledge to try this again. So the payoff is I'm taking, I'm taking a risk now, which can be feel like a negative payoff, but could be very rewarding that it actually works and you're actually successful. So it's weighing those payoffs and really getting clear, what am I buying into? That's excellent. That is excellent. You're going to get a payoff regardless. Yeah. And And that's why people stay stuck is they think the payoff of believing the lie is greater Mm. and more valuable. So they believe that. Yeah. And they, they own that. What do you feel like, uh, as far as personally, let's say it's an epic failure, like a big one. Let's say losing a business. Uh, okay. Meaning you built it all up. It's something and you've, you absolutely crush it to develop it 
it's successful, and then all of a sudden, either by a bad decision or circumstances that were out of your control, and you absolutely lose it all. Do you feel like that there is a time where you need to heal from that before you take on the risk again? You know, because some people will fail at things that are very small, and those are easy to overcome. Give me a day or two, I'll get over it, I'm ready to move on. But that's not everybody. Sometimes they're, they're, a marriage fails mm -hmm. or a business fails. Mm -hmm. How do you think, what is your opinion on how do you think you can handle that time? Do you need to take time to, 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 to center yourself, for lack of better words, to heal from it? Uh, just want to get your take on that. I do think there's a time to heal when something so traumatic like that happens because that is traumatic, a traumatic life event. I don't think it's exclusively apart from one another. I do think you can heal and rebuild at the same time. Mm. It might be at a different pace. Right. Not what everybody else says to do. Right. Find your pace. Find your pace. You can take, and if you need to take the time separately to heal for a little bit, take that space. But I don't think they're exclusively apart from one another. I really believe that you can build rebuild, relearn. I think it takes a lot of reflection. Why did this fail? What wasn't in alignment? Because that's a lot of it right there when it comes to failure. Something wasn't in alignment with your values. Something wasn't in alignment with your mindset. Something was off. So taking the time to reflect, why did this fail? How about boundaries? You think it didn't align with boundaries? Absolutely. That's another big piece of it, too. Where sometimes boundaries are, lack of a better word, you know, not profound enough or in place living without them, mm -hmm. just, you know, and there's been time, <laughs> been times in my life where I've kind of lived without boundaries and just let it all go head down, super focused. Yeah. I'm going to win at all costs. I am laser focused. There are times where I'll be focused to the death, like that, you know, blinders on, I'm not hearing anything. <laughs> don't, don't bother me. Don't try to tell me how to do something because I know what I'm doing and just go all in and there's no boundaries in place. And then you find yourself on the other side of something and you're like, I can't believe I'm here. Mm -hmm. I didn't have no way did I intend to be here. Right? The, the common thing. Oh, but I didn't intend to get where I'm at or I'm, I didn't intend for it to be the way that it is. And, right. and then it turns into all of a sudden it's an epic fail, even though you're so driven and so focused on doing it without boundaries, without, as you're saying, figuring out the internal, like, what is it? That's my mindset. What is it? Am I, am I just, and it was at a, probably a pace that was not sustainable. No. Right. You can no. sprint for a while, but, but if you're sprinting all the you time, you can't live there. No. It's kind of like what we talked about in the last episode with us together about burnout. You can't, you can expand your capacity and stretch a little bit, but you can't live there. I think a lot of people do. They do. Yeah. And, and that's why failure comes up from time to time and it's normal and there's no shame in it. No, no. And everybody needs a safe place where they can fail. But again, going back to what you said, I think even that reflection, that reflection and looking at what do I need to change? And then intentionally taking different steps is healing in itself. It is. It is. And I think once you get to a place of healing, then it kind of gives you a blank canvas to say, okay, I'm ready to try again. Yeah. There isn't a timetable on that. Don't let other people influence you on the timetable that you may need in order. If you're dealing with a failure, mm -hmm. you're dealing with a situation, take the time to work through it. Yeah. Take the time to get the healing from it. I think that there's a little bit of healing in all failure, small or big. Like I said, some are small enough to where in a day or so I can get over it. But you still got to internalize it. You got to metabolize it. Metabolize You've it. You've got to turn it around and say, okay, now that I did this and I screwed up or I, or I messed up over here, how do I make sure I don't do that again? And then I'm like, as I said, if I do it again, I'm going to do it bigger and better. I'm going <laughs> to fail at it twice as big. Like chips all in. That's right. 
But at the same time, you know, you, you kind of get that fresh mind, that fresh feeling of, okay, I'm ready to, you know, try again, try again, for sure. So what would you say to somebody that is in the place where they are sitting in failure right now? What would you say to them in this moment? It's okay. We all fail. You, oh, this too shall pass. It does. <sighs> it does. Always. Man, it feels like it never is going to go away when you're in the middle of it, but it always does. 100% of the time. Always goes away. I don't care if you lost everything. If you've lost everything and you're starting from ground zero, guess what? You can't lose it all again because you're at ground zero. It can only get better from there. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying it's got to be paint with a wide paintbrush and everything's going to be unicorns and rainbows. I'm not saying that whatsoever. Yeah, it's going to take some blood, sweat, and tears to dig out of that. Internally, you you lose everything, you have to change. You have to look at yourself and you got to change everything. So what was I doing? Who was I listening to? What was I reading? You know, what lifestyle was I living? Who uh, did I surround myself who with? Who did I surround myself with? All of that comes into play. What habits Absolutely. did I have? Absolutely. It's totally okay. We all fail. We all go through troubles and trials and tribulations. You are not alone. I guarantee you. And I can almost say this with extreme confidence because I really truly believe, you know, there's nothing new under the sun, right? That any failure or any struggle that someone is going through, someone else has gone through the exact same thing. And ironically to me, it, not irony, but more, you know, the blessing of the Lord, let's put it that way, that if I'm going through a failure or going through a struggle, he'll put somebody in my path that can help me through or has been through a very similar experience. Yeah. And it, let me tell you what, though, if he doesn't, because I've been to those places, I'm like, there's nobody, there's nobody. This is the time to lean into God and figure out who he created you to be. And sometimes you need that alone time because you've been too busy doing every other thing and listening to every other inspirational speaker and everybody else's successes. You're too busy consuming Mm. that you need to have that quiet time to reflect. So if you're in that place right now and you're, desiring somebody to help and support you, it could very well mean that this is your time to get quiet, to reflect, Mm -hmm. to lean on God, really listen, get a feel for where, what desires has he put in your heart and soul, get clear on your values, stop listening to the noise, get clear so that you can move forward authentically. I love that. I love that. And, and I, you're preaching to me because I'm a 10, 10 thing going on guy. Yeah. You know, and I, I said this before in previous podcasts that I love activity. I love doing multiple things. I feel fulfilled, energized. I don't feel lazy. I feel, you know, profitable. I feel motivated. I'm like, let's get it done. And I can fill myself up with busyness and the noise and the accomplishment side, but yet I'm failing. Hmm. You could be a, you could be succeeding and failing at the same stinking time. <laughs> yeah, especially in different areas of your life. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Yeah. I'm like I am crushing life right now, and then lo and behold, slap upside the head of like you think so. Here's an area of your life that you're failing in. Yeah. Thanks for the wake up call. So yeah, you could be successful and failing at the same time. Take that to the bank. How you like them? I like them apples. <laughs> Do you realize you could be successful and failing at the same time? And that's normal. Of course. And that's normal. Thank you. That is normal. But I want to reduce my failures. Yeah. And we want to learn from them. We want to yeah. grow from them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you said, don't fail the same way twice. Oh man. If you're going to fail a second time, make it big. <laughs> like, <laughs> funny story. Like somebody said, uh, Total side note, but I just I want to tell this this funny story. It was it was a joke about um, uh, somebody had gone into a convenience store and and had gotten a hot dog or something and had walked out and the cashier didn't charge for the hot dog and he came back in and he was like oh man I definitely want to pay for the hot dog uh, and and uh, the cashier was like oh I appreciate you being so honest about it you know it's not that big of a deal and and he goes he's like look man he's like. 
I am not going to get either arrested or going to jail or do something like that over a stinking hot dog. If I'm going to be on the six o'clock uh-huh. news, I'm going to go out swinging, <laughs> right? It's going to be like the biggest thing ever. And I think it was something like, you know, I ain't going to hell over stealing a hot dog. If I'm going to go to hell, man, it's going to be like the biggest <laughs> daggone way possible. Like the whole world's going to know everything that I did. Oh my god! So goodness. I just say like, you know, if you're going to go out, go out swinging, right? You know, if you're going to fail... If you fail at something, and if you got, try it again and you fail a second time, man, make it an epic failure, right? Learn from it. Learn yeah, from it. Yeah. And there's some risk involved with that. You know, I get it. I get that there's going to be, there could be tarnished relationships or there could be people that look at you a different way, or there could be ones that you realize that you thought were your friends that really weren't your friends. Ooh, can you talk about that a little bit? Well, I think that's for another episode. That'll probably be for another episode. Yeah, we'll, we'll put a, put a bookmark <laughs> on that one. But, but you, you feel what I'm saying, right? It's, it's, you know, don't give up on one failure. Don't yeah. give up on one failure. Yeah. I hate failing, but I love failing too. It's a love hate relationship. It really, really, truly is. Yeah. I was one that grew up where I tried my best not to fail at all. It was, I tried to oh. be perfect. Mm-hmm. And if it wasn't perfect, then it was an epic failure. It but was I'm, straight A's all the time. Straight A's all the time. Like perfect attendance, mm-hmm. you know, making sure. Every little box was checked and every, cause you didn't want anybody to, and I think too, okay, we're going to, we're going to go into this a little bit deeper right here. By doing that, you're, you're creating an environment where nobody has anything on you. They can't point their finger at you by saying you're doing something wrong in this area. Right. So criticism is even harder to handle and really You don't have experience in anything. Mm -mm. And then you become unrelatable because you're not human anymore. Become a robot. Yeah. 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 I think there are a lot of robots walking around out here. Yeah. So that's just to say failure is a great thing. Take those risks. Yes. Be okay with it. I mean, we don't want to just plow into failure either. Blindly. No. With without consideration without thinking things through we just don't want to be reckless as we go through life either but yeah i'm going to take our mortgage payment and i'm going to go take the risk because i'm going to give it all i can you know and and risk the the well-being of my personal life and my family don't do that yeah don't be reckless but when those failures come and you're faced with it just embrace it metabolize it break it down Get gain energy from it to create something new. I love it. I love it, babe. I think that's been a great podcast today. This was fun to talk it was a about. A lot of fun. I think we just kind of flew right through it. We got into it. Got into a lot of the meat and potatoes of what it's what it's like dealing with failure. How to overcome failure. It's a hard topic. It's a it's a hard yeah. thing to deal with in life. Even personal experiences. Yeah. You know, that's that's the best part, I think, when you can talk from a personal level, personal experiences. This is my personal testimonies. These are my real life experiences that I've gone through in failure and how I've been able to overcome them. And still, even to this day, like today, dealing with failures to overcome. Any parting words? No. Nope. You just, good? Yeah. Just keep on keeping on. Keep on keeping Don't on. Don't give up. Get back up. Absolutely. Well, I appreciate you guys joining us today uh, for the Suit Up podcast in overcoming failure. I hope that what we've said today has been an impact to you that will help you along the way. Uh, of course, it was an honor having my beautiful wife, Lisa, with me today. Thanks and you look fine, me. as always. I love what you're wearing. Thank like We you. talk a little bit about the fashion side like as well. I love the black and the green, and you look fantastic. And as you do always. Thank you, honey. I'll receive all of that. So don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button, and we will see you guys next time. Take care. All right, guys. Today's show was sponsored by my very own company, uh, Fox Edge Grooming Products. So we have a whole line of men's grooming products that I personally use and personally helped kind of formulate and come up with the idea and concept. We use all natural ingredients, and believe you me, the whole line smells fantastic. I love it. Uh, Anybody that ever has smelled it says, wow, this stuff smells great. So if you want to get your own Fox Edge hair care or beard line products, you can go to my website, which is www.stephenadkins.us. And of course, the link will be in the description below. So looking forward to seeing you guys with the Fox Edge. Appreciate you watching all the way till the end today. And thanks again for being a part of the Suit Up podcast. 
So we have a new way of support here at Suit Up with Patreon. Uh, you can subscribe in different tiers to support the show. The great news is that there's each has a different tier, and within that tier, there are different levels of access that you will have to myself, but all will support the show in a major way. So one of the tiers may be access to questions or interaction. Another tier may be an opportunity where you could submit photos or get some wardrobe advice. And even another tier, we may even be able to set up a personal Zoom call where you and I interact for 15, 20, 30 minutes. So these would be great ways that allows access to get some of those questions and some of the things that you'd like done answered. Now, naturally, if you can't support monetarily, we totally understand, but you can always subscribe for free and like and share our video with the, your friends and audience that you feel would enjoy watching Suit Up. So thanks again for joining. Mm -hmm.